Uh, we are going to discuss planning function. Under the syllabus, it's topic 4.1. So remember we talked about the, we talked about the management functions that we said the management functions are planning, organizing, staffing, directing also called leading. Directing is also called leading. Indeed, you, that's why in the syllabus you can see it's called other functions of management. Why is it called other functions of management? Because the main emphasis of this, the main emphasis of this topic, of this unit is leadership. Are we together? Now they give more emphasis to directing. Directing is also called leading. And that's why you can see we have reading as a topic on its own other topic three, reading as a function of management and even topic six, leadership approaches and strategy. And even the last topic, leadership and strategic change. So there is a lot of emphasis on directing, which is leadership. So directing is also called leading. And then we shall finalize with controlling. So we are going to look at all of them in order. So meaning once we reach to topic planning, we should then look organizing, then we look at staffing. Then when we shall be discussing directing, that is when we shall look at topic three and topic six, under directing and we finalize with controlling. So we are going to discuss planning function, under the syllabus, this is what you're supposed to know, planning function. By the end of this topic, we are supposed to understand what is planning. Two, we are supposed to understand importance of planning. We are supposed to understand the planning process. We are supposed to understand types of plans. And then we also understand approaches to planning. So let's understand planning. What is planning? And planning, it is setting objectives. It is setting objectives and formulating courses of action and formulating courses, courses of action to achieve them, to achieve the set objectives. So, activities in planning include, activities in planning include, indeed, you know, as we should look at the characteristics, we should also discuss the characteristics of planning. We shall say that planning is the primary function of management. You cannot do management without planning. And indeed, you'll find that there are so many topics also that emphasize on planning in this syllabus. For instance, environmental analysis is part of planning. And environmental analysis, we did it in the last class, topic five. Are you together? So it's part of planning. Decision making, which is topic seven, is also part of planning. So those are some of the key activities involved in planning. So planning is very important and it's the primary function of management. Without planning, there is no management. So critical activities in planning include one, objective setting. So you set objectives, objectives setting. Environmental analysis, environmental analysis, forecasting, 
forecasting and decision making. So you can see that topic, as I've said, environmental analysis, topic five, and decision making, topic seven. That is planning also. That is part of planning. So we've said activities include involved in planning are objective setting, environmental analysis, forecasting, and decision making. Let's understand characteristics of planning. Characteristics of planning. And one of the characteristics, it is goal oriented. And that's why we say it's involved with setting objectives of the organization. It is forward looking or future oriented. Unlike controlling, controlling, we shall say it is present oriented. Then it is an intellectual process. It is requires a lot of thinking. You have to think. It's an intellectual process. You think a lot. That's why you require which skills for you to do planning? Which skills do you require most? You remember the skills, management skills? Management skills. Which are the management skills one? Yes? Human relations, stroke interpersonal two, conceptual three, Technical. So which skills do you require most in planning? Conceptual. So it is an intellectual process. Uh, requires conceptual skills. Requires conceptual skills. It's so analytical. You have to think out. It's a continuous process. It's a continuous process. It is a primary function of management. It is a primary function of management. It is directed towards, it is directed towards achieving efficiency. It is pervasive. What does it mean by pervasive? That is undertaken at all levels of management undertaken at all levels of management, it is integrative. And what it means by integrative is coordinates all functions, coordinates all functions of the organization. Then it involves making choices, making choices. It involves making choices among alternative causes of action. Importance of planning. Why do we undertake planning? One, why do we undertake planning? It's part of risk management. You see, these are some of the ones that always say you go to them with the exams. Is that true? Risk, resources. In other words, it also ensures optimal utilization of resources. It also, in, those are the ones, goal, achievement of organizational goals. 
it in aids in decision making right together yes so let's write down uh ensures first ensures optimal utilization of resources to facilitates risk management or someone else may put it this way reduces uncertainty at risks reduces uncertainty at risks three uh, facilitates achievement of organizational goals for enhances efficiency and effectiveness of operations aids decision making aids decision making facilitates evaluation of performance how because you are going to measure the organizational performance based on plans you have you you've made you can only measure the organizational performance based on the plans that you've made then facilitates coordination facilitates coordination provides direction to organizational members provides direction to organization members Mm. Then it also motivates employees, motivates employees, motivates employees, and improves communication, and improves communication, motivates employees and communic improves communication. And the importance of planning is the same as the reasons for planning. Importance of planning is the same as the reasons for planning. Then barriers through constraints to planning. Barriers through constraints to planning. Barriers through constraints to planning. And as I say that it's the same as environmental analysis, more of environmental analysis, because as you plan, you don't know. The future is unknown. Is that true? Sometimes people don't have planning skills. It is costly. Let's write them. One, lack of planning skills. Lack of planning skills. Two, the future is unknown. And therefore, it involves uncertainty and risk. Three, insufficient resources. That's what it means. Insufficient resources is the same as it's costly or it's expensive for lack of information 
add data or you can put it unavailable and inaccurate data. Then it creates rigidity. It creates rigidity. Why are we saying it creates rigidity? In other words, when plans are made, people have to stick to them. And that's why it limits people from using their own creativity and innovation to undertake organizational functions organization functions, then lack of commitment to the planning process, lack of commitment to the planning process, it's time consuming. It is also, it is time consuming. Those are barriers. Then also resistance of employees. Resistance of employees. Uh, now let's say the examiner happens to twist this question and ask, discuss six ways of overcoming barriers to effect to effect overcoming barriers to effective planning. Discuss six ways of overcoming barriers to effective planning. Now, I the examiner expects you to give solutions to this, these problems. Is that true? So what, what is the solution to lack of planning skills? Training. Are we together? So can we write them down? We can write them maybe. Ways of so so ways we can ways of overcoming bar these barriers ways of overcoming barriers to effective planning and one of them we said lack of planning skills we may do training. And two, in the movement of experts. Those two will help us to overcome uh, the challenge of lack of planning skills. What about insufficient resources? Is to provide what? We provide resources to undertake planning. We provide resources to undertake planning. Are we together? Yes. We, we, we provide resources to undertake planning. What about rigidity? How do we overcome it? Yeah. So we, what we do is to, plans should be made flexible to accommodate changes and new ideas. Ensure flexibility in planning ensure there is flexibility to accommodate change, to accommodate changes and new ideas. What about um, commitment? Yes? So these two commitment and resistance we can uh, we can involve. Is that true? Participation and involvement of employees. Participation and involvement of employees. Com resistance we can also overcome it through regular communication during the entire planning process, during the entire planning process, during the entire planning process. Yeah. And even commitment to, to plan, commit time, commit time to planning. 
commit time to planning. So those are some of the ways we can be able to overcome the challenges. We can be able to overcome the challenges to planning. So we move on to look at classification of plans. Classification of plans. Classification of plans. Uh, when we talk about the classification of plans, we can classify based on, based on the scope and based on the time frame. Based on the time frame, and we can also classify them. So we've talked about scope. At time frame and use. So we can write, we can note that that plans can be classified based on the following. So aspect, we can have like a table, like a small table. We have the aspect and types of plans types of plans. So the one of the aspects in which we can, or aspect is the same as basis, because they use the word based. So we can classify based on the scope. Based on the scope is that if it involves the entire organization, which kind of plans is that? If it involves the entire organization, which kind of plan is that? Strategic. So uh, we can have, uh, strategic plans, tactical plans, and operational plans. So that's uh, based on scope. Or even we can say based on the scope or level of management. This is top level middle level, lower level. Then based on time frame, based on time frame, we have long-term plans, middle uh, long-term plans, middle-term plans, and lower and short-term plans. And indeed, there's also an aspect of level of management in this because long-term plans are also more of strategic plans. Do you agree? Middle-term plans are more or less of tactical plans and short-term plans are more of the operational plans. Then based on use, based on use and based on use, we have studying plans and single use plans. Studying plans. Studying plans, these are routine. Routine plans, routine plans. They are used on a daily basis. For instance, procedures, work procedures, and there is also single use plans. And therefore, that one answers the types of plans. Now, definitely, I know you understand the difference, the characteristics of strategic plans. Do you agree? Characteristics of strategic plans. 
that strategic plans, which could we list down the characteristics of strategic plans? So they are long term, so we can list them down. So uh, strategic char characteristics of strategic plans. Whether it is strategic plans, we can even combine. The examiner might also tell you, list down characteristics of strategic decisions. Because decision, so it's more or less, this, it's the same. One, you've told me long-term in nature, long-term in nature. Two, yes, yes. Yeah, involves the organization, the entire involves planning for the entire organization. Three, complex or a broad in scope, broad in scope. Focuses on the external environment. Focuses on the external environment. Involves major resource allocation. Then we can also shaped by the uh, uh, made by the top level management, made by the top level managers or made at the top level of the organization. So they are made at the top level. Management. So we can even draw a table here and now distinguish between strategic plans, tactical plans, and operational plans. And I want to draw it here because this is a bit wide, this space. So, I hope you finished writing those characteristics made by the top level managers. Maybe there's a characteristic I've forgotten that is so that you feel it should be part of it. This is characteristics are reading now. Yes. Yeah, it requires conceptual skills. Requires conceptual skills requires conceptual skills. Indeed, uh, as part of the, um, before we now draw that table to distinguish between strategic plans, tactical plans and operational plans. I want us to know because uh, part of the strategic plans, we need to understand these strategic plans, what is included in a strategic plan. Are we together? You need to understand uh, what components of a strategy. So let's write down components of a strategic plan. Components of a strategic plan. Components of a strategic plan. And one of it is mission statement. Mission statement. Two, you have to have the mission statement in the strategic plan. Vision. Vision statement. Vision statement. Uh, you know, a mission statement answers the question. Yes? Why? Which question does it answer? Why do we 
exist? Why do we exist? And what about the vision statement? Where, to, where do you want to be? Are you together? So vision, Nipale unataka kufika. Mission, what are you doing to arrive there? Sindio? To achieve the vision. Then value statement, by core values. Core values or the guiding principles of the organization. Then SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis. Uh-huh. Core, core competence of the firm, core competence. And we said core competence are unique resources and capabilities action plans key performance indicators key performance indicators what will show that you have achieved your strategic plan are the key performance indicators so that's what you include in a strategic plan that's what you include in a strategic plan indeed if the examiner was also to ask you Leah, though we shall list them down when we shall be looking at the decision making characteristics are uh, the way the classification of decisions classification of decisions the same thing we have strategic decisions tactical decisions and operational decisions though when we shall be looking at decision making we shall mention that now let's look at uh we distinguish between character strategic plans tactical plans and operational plans so i want to wrap this so we want to distinguish between strategic plans tactical plans and operational plans and we are going to put up a table So, so difference between or difference among, sorry, <laughs> because there are three, among strategic, tactical, and operational plans. And we will do a table, one of them, we shall have the basis. We shall have the basis. Of distinguishing the, them. Here we shall have strategic. Plans. Here we shall have uh, tactical plans. And here we shall have operational plans. So now the first basis is scope. Scope. In regard to scope, these are broad. Broad scope covering the entire organization. Broad scope covering the entire organization. Then moderate scope covering a specific functional area a specific functional area, maybe the HR department only. 
and this one narrow scope covering a specific activity narrow scope covering a specific activity so that's the the way we can distinguish on the basis of scope number two is time frame let's distinguish the the, the three in terms of time frame with the time frame long term long term covering five to ten years not uh, long the, the keyword is long term covering five to ten years then moderate time frame moderate this the, the word here in tactical is moderate time frame covering two to five years covering two to five years and the other one is short-term plans covering one year short term covering less than a year so the word is short term moderate term time a uh, short time frame long term and short term so that's about time frame the other difference is environment And at the environment focuses on the external environment. Focuses on the external environment. Focuses on the internal environment. focuses on the internal environment also. Complexity. Complex. In the, so complex means there is a lot of uncertainty. There is a lot of uncertainty relatively simple uh, with the whatever with the middle with the tactical plans they are relatively simple and these ones are simple. Then the other one is resources. resources and other resources uh, focuses on mobilizing focuses on mobilization mobilization and allocation of major resources of the farm and allocation of major resources of the farm. Then focuses on utilization of allocated resources, of allocated resources also focuses on utilization of allocated resources. Then the other, dif the other basis of differentiating them orientation and at the orientation focus on effectiveness as opposed to efficiency 
focuses on effectiveness as opposed to efficiency. Focuses on both effectiveness and efficiency. Focuses on efficiency. Then another difference that is a bit simple but very important is um, level of management. Top level, middle level, lower level. So those are some of the difference between strategic plans, tactical plans, and operational plans. Now, we also, under the classification of planning, under the classification of planning, we also talked about the, the study, the use, and we talked about studying plans and single use plans. So let's discuss the, that basis of uh, basis on the use. And we say the basis, we, we have distinguished between, we have the said basis of classification of plans is based on the, the time, the scope, under the scope we have strategic plans, tactical plans and operational plans. On the basis of time, we have long-term plans, middle-term plans and short-term plans. And based on the use, we have studying plans. Studying plans are routine. They help us undertake routine activities. For instance, policies, rules and procedures, policies, rules and procedures. And we have the single use plans and single use plans are developed to handle non-recurring activities. For instance, an emergency. So the, the single use plans are used on uh, for handling non-recurring, whereas studying plans are used to handle recurring. So let's write down that. So classification based on use, classification of plans, of plans based on use. One, we have studying plans. And as I have said, studying plans include one, we have policies procedures, rules. And two, we have single-use plans. <laughs> and we can elaborate on studying plans used to handle recurring activities. and include policy procedures rules and policies police procedures rules and policies Hmm. Importance of procedure, importance of procedures, rules and policies. Why are they necessary in organizations? One is that 
ensure standardization of processes, standardization, standardization or consistency of policies to reduce uncertainty, reduce uncertainty, facilitates coordination, facilitates measurement of performance, facilitates uh, evaluation of performance, evaluation of performance provides direction provides direction to employees provides direction to employees Aids decision making, aids decision making ensures proper utilization, ensures proper utilization of resources. If you are very keen, you must have observed that they are those ones that we are commonly using. For instance, we keep always talking about its decision making, even the importance of planning. Its decision making, part of uh, it's necessary for risk management or reducing uncertainty. Things like uh, goal or uh, helps in achievement of organizational goals, efficiency and effectiveness of operations. So even ensures ensures efficiency and effectiveness. of operations. So that's about studying plans. Then we can talk about single-use plans. Single-use plans. And when we talk about the single-use plans, they had non-routine. Non they had non-routine activities and include and include programs projects and budgets include programs plans and budgets they include programs plans and budgets so those are the single use plans those are the single use plans so we have been able to talk about the types of plans. And the next thing we are going to understand, the next thing we are going to understand is the planning process. When we are undertaking planning, which steps do you, add, do you go through? The planning process. The planning process. So let's talk about, you can see it's part of what you're supposed to understand by the end of the topic, by the end of the class, planning process. We are done with, we have finished looking at the classification of plants and we said we can classify them based on scope. Scope, we have strategic, tactical, and operational based on time frame, long term, middle term, and short term, and based on use. That's the studying plans and single use plans. Well, now, when we talk about planning process, you realize that there's a lot of similarity with the planning process with what we had talked about components of a strategic plan. And we've talked about the components of a strategic plan, including mission statement, vision statement, core values or guiding principles of the organization, the SWOT analysis, that's number four. What else have we talked about? The key performance indicators, among others. So you'll see those terms that we keep reusing terms like decision-making, uh, mission, 
environmental analysis because they are very important when you are undertaking planning and we shall keep repeating them. Indeed, the first step in of the planning process is identification and of the mission and vision. Identification of mission and vision of the organization. So that's the first thing you do when planning. Then after you identify the mission and vision, environmental analysis. What are the uh, what are the activities involved in environmental analysis? Yes. So activities activities in environmental analysis. We talked about the steps. It's the same as the steps. The first step was scanning, then forecasting, and then assessment. Did you talk about it? Yes, scanning, forecast, environmental scanning, environmental forecasting, and environmental assessment. Then objective setting, objective setting, objective setting, you set objectives. Then determining the planning premises, determining, the planning premises. That is assumptions made in planning, assumptions made in planning. Identify alternative strategies, identify alternative strategies to achieve set objectives, to achieve set objectives. Then evaluate alternative strategies and select the, mo the most suitable option. Evaluate alternative strategies and select the most suitable option. Seven, formulate derivative and formulate contingent plans. Formulate contingent plans. These are the step five, six, and seven are very important. Note, you will identify the alternative causes of action or alternative strategies and evaluate each of them. And after evaluating, indeed, some books will put this, the, the, this as three points. Identify, evaluate, and selecting. Are you together? You identify, evaluate, and then select. Now, after identifying, evaluating and selecting. So once you select the most suitable options that you'll go with, what if it fails? If it fails, you go with the what? Contingent plans, are you together? So contingent plans is like plan B. If your plan here fails, then you go with the what? Contingent plans. So that's why you need to have contingent plan. Then you need to secure operate. So now you are done with the planning, you secure cooperation, cooperation with your employees so that they don't resist your plans. Secure cooperation. And finally, formulate programs for implementation. Formulate programs for implementation. formulate programs for implementation. So that's the planning process. So we started with identification of mission and vision, environmental analysis, then objectives setting for determining the planning premises. That is the assumptions that you are going to make in that planning. Then identify alternative strategies, evaluate, then select, then 
determine the contingent plans. And after determining the contingent plans, you do what? You secure cooperation. And after securing cooperation, you formulate programs for implementation. So that's the planning process. That's the planning process. So we've really discussed the importance of planning, the planning process, the types of planning. Now we are look at the goal setting. Goal setting. I hope you memorize them. Identification of mission and vision. Environmental analysis. Objective setting, determining the planning premises. And then after determining the planning premises, you data identify alternative strategies, evaluate and select. And after selecting contingent planning, and after contingent planning, securing corporations and coming up with the, with the programs for implementation. Is that okay? Yes. So a goal, goal setting, a goal, is a statement of, the, of, of what the organization hopes to achieve at a stated time in the future. Is a statement of what the organization intends to achieve in a stated future, to achieve at a stated time in the future at a stated time in the future. Goals are broad. at general while objectives are specific and quantitative while objectives are specific and quantitative classification of goals We have corporate goals. Corporate goals are also called strategic goals. They involve the organization as a whole. We have operational goals. We have long-term and short-term goals. Then we look at characteristics of good objectives. There's an acronym we use when we are talking about characteristics of good objectives, which is that acronym? Oof. I have heard it smart, Cindy. Smart, sour. So when you're talking about characteristics of good objectives, they should be smart. Smart means specific. Then M means measurable. A means achievable. R means realistic and time bound. So that's what it means by smart. Specific, what does it mean by specific? Sp 
So they should be clear, clear add to the point, clear add to the point. What does it mean by measurable? They should be quantifiable. Then we can say that we were able to achieve 80% of our targets or 70% of our targets. We can be able to quantify how they've been achieved. What about um, attainable? What does it mean? Uh, achievable also means attainable. So that means that they are attainable. So they should not be too challenging. They should not be too challenging to achieve. They should be within what we can, we are capable of doing. Then realistic, what does it mean? Can be achieved within the organizational resources. Can be achieved within the organizational resources. And time bound means they have a what? There is a, there is a deadline to achieve them. There is a time frame in which we should be able to achieve them. There is a, we give ourselves a deadline. For instance, we have the vision 2030. We have the, even the government itself, it has a plan, the five years plan on what they intend to achieve. Other characteristics include others that we can discuss. They should also be flexible to accommodate changes. They should also be simple. They should be easy to understand. Easy to understand. Then they should also be consistent or relevant. What if the examiner happens to us? Importance of goals. Let's list them down without even necessarily writing so that we see whether is it importance of goals and importance of planning and importance of even, we have discussed them. Is that okay? Why do we need goals in the organization one? Yeah, ensures optimal utilization of resources. Number two. Yes. So they aid in decision making. They aid in decision making. Three. Yes. Why else do we need goals? Do they provide direction to the employees? They provide direction to, you can list them, list them down. I think you can write down importance of goals in the organizations. One, provides direction to employees. Provides direction to employees. Number two, aids decision making. Three, ensures. So for instance, here the book the goals eliminate hazard actions since the, every action becomes purposeful direct to one's attainment of stated goals. In other words, they ensure they reduce uncertainty and risks. Goals reduce uncertainty and risk. Goals facilitate evaluation of performance, in which we also say that the planning, planning and uh, facilitates um, evaluation of performance, ensures efficiency and effectiveness, motivates organizational, motivates employees. We also talked about that at the planning. Then they also facilitate optimal allocation of the organizational resources, ensures coordination, ensures coordination, ensures coordination. Yes? Yes? Yeah, they ensure efficiency and effectiveness of organizational processes. Ensures efficiency and effectiveness of organizational processes. Yes? Yeah, increases productivity. Ensures there is increased productivity. Ensures there is increased productivity. So those are some of the benefits. Why I have not listed them because we have listed them in most of the, we have talked about them at the planning. Importance of planning is the same as why we need goals in the organization. Uh, one of the approaches, approaches to planning, one of the popular approach to planning is something we call management by objectives. Management by objectives. Indeed, this is one of this is the only approach we are going to discuss, popularly known as MBO. 
you need to understand what does it mean by management by objectives. Management by objectives simply means management by objectives simply means that objectives are set collaboratively by both the employees and the management. Are we together? So we collaborate. There is collaboration or there is participation of the employees in goal setting. There is participation of the employees in goal setting. So once we understand that concept, now to discuss the importance will be easy. To also discuss the limitations will also be easy. You need to understand the concept first. That is a collaboration of the employees and the management in setting objectives. Are you together? What are the, could be the possible limitations? When we engage employees in decision-making, are there limitations? For instance, one, Yes? Time consuming. Is it time consuming? Yes. Because the management, now when we have to consult the employees, so it's time consuming to another? Resistance. Resistance is overcome by MBO. Resistance should be a benefit. In other words, it overcomes resistance to change because when you engage employees in decision making, there is that acceptability of decisions, but I'm asking limitations, one time consuming too. Yeah, lack, yeah account, lack of accountability, because now the, the, the managers will say, employees say it, are you together? Yes, in other words, the management can be able to evade responsibility and they shift the blame to who? To the employees. Another challenge? Another challenge? So, it, so if we are going to lack of the top management support, sometimes they pretend, are you together? Lack of management support, and then internal rigidity. Anyway, we are going to light them down. So let's write what is management by objectives. MBO is where management and employees collaboratively collaboratively set objectives or goals of the organization. So they collaboratively set goals and objectives of the organization. Process of MBO and one is that overall organizational goals are set. Overall organizational goals are set. Collaboratively. Then manage, so responsibilities and tasks are agreed responsibility and tasks are agreed then key performance indicators are set or key results are set resources need resources needed Are, are agreed. The worker is provided with resources and left to work. The worker is provided with the is provided with the necessary resources. With the necessary resources 
and left to work. A review of, of the progress is undertaken. A review of the progress is undertaken. Evaluation is, evaluation, final evaluation is done. Final evaluation is done. So those are some of the things. So characteristics of MBO. Characteristics of MBO. And the key characteristics is collaboration. Collaboration or managers and subordinates. Number two, joint goal setting. Joint goal setting. Number three, support from superiors. Number four, subordinates freedom to be creative. Among others. Now, advantages of MBO. Advantages, why do we need MBO? I said, you need to first know you need to know that this is a collaboration between the employees and the managers in setting organizational objectives so advantages of mbo advantages of mbo And one of the advantages is minimizes resistance to change. Minimizes resistance to change, motivates employees. Increased employees' commitment. Improved communication. Between managers and sub-employees. Saves managerial time. Saves managerial time so that they can focus, so that they can focus on strategic decision, on strategic matters. In other words, when you, because employees now, it reduced supervision. There is reduced supervision reduced supervision and this this is what we now saves management time it's a it facilitates training facilitates employees training and development employees training and development Ensures self-discipline. Ensures 
self-discipline of employees. And we also need to note that improved creativity of employees, improved creativity. In other words, we are asking ourselves, when new employees participate in decision making, what are the benefits? Right together. It's not necessarily the examiner to test you the importance of MBO. He can ask any question. Why should organizations involve employees in decision making to minimize resistance to change, to motivate employees, to ensure that there is increased employees commitment, to improve communication between the managers and employees, to also save on managerial time to facilitate employees training and development, to ensure self-discipline and even improved creativity, among other points that you may have. Now, we are going to now finalize with limitations of MBO. Limitations or MBO. Management by objectives. One, time consuming. Time consuming. Lack of top management support. Lack of accountability. Or minimized account, uh, compromises accountability. Lack of skills, lack of skills for set, lack of skills in setting objectives, in setting objectives by, by, by subordinates. Leads to internal rigidity, leads to internal rigidity leads to internal rigidity overemphasizes on short term goals overemphasizes on short term goals and then it also emphasizes over emphasizes on quantitative goals on quantitative goals and how do we now overcome we say that any limitations should have a what? A proposed solution, right together, or ways to overcome them. Time consuming, what do we do to that problem? Yes, what do we do to that problem? We, add, we allocate adequate time, then it's also costly. It is costly. The solution to time consuming, we allocate time to MBO. Are we together? So conditions, in other words, conditions necessary for MBO to work. One, we allocate time to MBO. Then, then lack of top management support. That MBO managers must be mentally convinced that it is a good program. In other words, you orient the managers to accept that MBO is necessary. You orient them to know that MBO is necessary. Then what about lack of skills? What do we do to that? Training. So in other words, organizational members must be trained on MBO. They should be trained on MBO. What about leads to internal rigidity? That MBO plans should be flexible to accommodate what? To accommodate change. And then it should also emphasize on long-term goals. 
and also qualitative goals, and we also commit resources. We commit resources to MBO. So that brings us to the end of the topic, planning function. Planning function. So in the next class, we are going to discuss organizing, organizing. So thank you.